The woman says, <coughs> I'm a, whatever I do for your father, for my father is off limits. For your father, for my father, brother, has no relevance to the husband. What about what I do is off limits to you? And it's Why? Because she's bound. Reb Kiva Omi Yofir. Why Yofir? Shem Atadi Polu. Yosmi in a Roy. Because what happens in this, what we call Hadofa? She's obligated to do so much. Whatever she earns more than, than, she, than she's obligated to give to the husband. So regarding that, then that it will take effect. So therefore, you should be made for that. Because why? Because that interferes with the relationship. Or Reb Yochum Nuri Omi Yofir. Why? Reb Yochum and Nuri. Shemi Garsheno. Teasur Olo. Meaning he should be made for not for now, but for the future. Because if he should divorce <laughs> her, the <laughs> no, he's nullifying something which didn't take place today, but will take place in the future. So the Gemara is going to derive from this conjure of Yochum, where he holds other Maktish, Nobish, Because he's saying the netter is affecting something which she's not in a position right now to bring about. Right mm -hmm. now she's married. The netter is not effective whatsoever. Yeah. So when will the netter take effect? Later, after she's divorced, as Nobish, let's see the run. Take a moment. Konim sheni osa al pi abo, ma sheni osa ye lefi abo shkoni. What I do for you, for my father should be off limits. Any ochel of him, dein elu didri him nefesh l'dum shemin. It's neither. It doesn't meet any of the criteria. Sheni osa al picha enu tzoch l'hafer. Why? Mishum the mishum the mishubod, mishabdim shabedes like because she's indebted him. She's bound to him. Vlav kol kamine the mafkas le the shubudei. She's not able to revoke that level of indebtedness. What does that mean? You hear this? If she earns more than she's obligated to give to the husband, that belongs to her. So if that belongs to her, the net affects that. Right? Because she's not Meshubedes to give more than she has to earn. So why could he, could he not let Monav show? Because it interferes with the relationship. not concerned why. So therefore, she, has, she can't affect it. Because it's not for the now, but for the future. <coughs> Because he may divorce her, and he can't remarry. Why can't he marry her? The sphere lay Rabbi Yochanan and the Rikitana Kabbat Adofa Nami the Baal Yavyo. So it's not because of Adofa. Hilkoch Mishum Adofa is either Adofa. Now it's not for now, it's for the future. Ain't Tzorch Lafir El Bashem Yigarshen of Yehaneder Chol Mishigarsho. So when will the Neder take effect after he divorces her? Because then she's not bound any longer for earnings. The earnings are hers. And he can't remarry her. Anything she does is off limits. What, so she has to grind milk for him. She can't do anything for him. The Rabbi Yochanan Minuri. Every time I come on, Rabbi Yochanan Minuri. Why? He doesn't say because of the eventuality of divorce. In Bishum Dos Virlei, the Mahani Afor Lichim Megarish Lo. In Bishum the Neder Gufa Kevd Hashlo Chayil Kamein Amir. Since now it's not effective, there's like in other Makdod of Shelo Bol Olam, right? Upluktai Da Dofa Ida Bal Havia. The argument whether if she earns more than she's obligated, does it belong to her? Does it belong to the husband? It means she has to t do the extra effort. It doesn't come easily. She went and did more than she was obligated to do. Let's see the Gemara. Back to the Gemara. Oma Shmuel Haloch Rabbi Yochum Menuri. We rule like Rabbi Yochum Menuri that why does he have to nullify the netter? Because the eventuality, if he should divorce her, it'll take effect. Lameimer, so what do we deduce from this? If Shmuel says that we rule like Rabbi Yochan and Menuri, Shmuel evidently holds other Magdish Dovish Lobalolam, Uramini, we have a problem. A Magdish Masi de Yishto, there's a Mishnah Subas, somebody who consecrates the earnings of his wife, the earnings of his wife. Hareze Ose, Hareze Oso, Vocheles, 
Moser, he, the husband goes, the husband goes as Magdish. The husband's Magdish, the earnings of his wife. Harezu Osev Ochele, she earns and she could benefit. Mm -hmm. Moser, what about beyond? Beyond what she needs? Beyond what she needs. Rameir Omer Hegdish. Why? Because Rameir holds other Magdish, Dovish Elbola Olam. That's also, right? I mean, what she needs for herself, that he can't affect. Can't affect, but what about what she doesn't need? That he could affect, but she didn't earn the money yet. So evidently, what does her mayor hold? Her mayor holds, oh, the Magdish Dov Shemolov. You're able to consecrate something which hasn't even come into existence yet. Rabbi Yochanan Sandlo Omer Chulin. No, it's not affected. So what does Rabbi Yochanan Sandlo hold? Ain't oh, the Magdish Dov Shemolov. You can't consecrate something which she didn't earn the money yet. Therefore, it's Chulin. Vama Shmuel, Shmuel says, Halokh Rabbi Yochanan Sandlo. We rule like Rabbi Yochanan Sandlo. So what do we have? We have a contradiction. Almo. Or ain't no the magd of Shilbolo Olam. So we have a contradiction. Here Shmuel says now Mishnah, we rule like what? Like Riochanam and Nuri. Because you have to nullify it because in case he divorce her, the net or he's old today, it's not effective, it'll affect the future. And now we're saying that what? When the husband consecrates the earnings of the wife, he rules like Riochanam and Sadlo, that it's nothing. It's chulin. That means the Hegdish now cannot affect something which didn't come to existence yet. Alma ain't no the magd of Shilbolo Olam. The key tame, or maybe you want to say, Ki kamar loch rei bochonim nuri al hadofa, hu de kamar. Maybe it's regarding, we have seen around on this, only the hadofa. In, in our Mishnah, when it says halokh rei bochonim nuri, it's only the hadofa means now. For the extra. We'll say, Leim halokh rei bochonim nuri bhadofa, inam halokh ke tanakamo, inam halokh rei bhakivo, elom rei bhoi shani, I'll just do the just next line, elom rei bhoi Shani Konomos. Now, what's the reason why Eno the Magdish Dov Shulbolobam? Why can't you consecrate something that's not, that hasn't come into existence yet? Because it's not yours. It's not yours. You can't because you consecrate something that's not yours. If I want to consecrate, I'm Ruvain, I want to consecrate Shim's asset. You can't. It's not yours. Something until it comes to existence is not yours. What about Konim? You want to make a nether. Can I prohibit something which is not mine on me? You could. But it's not yours. How could you affect it? So you see, you could affect something that's not yours. So here the woman, the husband says, uh, she says, it should be Kone. Mm -hmm. You should not be able to benefit from my earnings. So, when, so therefore, if we're saying the reason why you can't consecrate something that's not yours is because there you're affecting it. Right. But that's Hegdish. What about Kone? Kone is provision of nether. Right. Nether, you see, you could affect something though it's not yours. So here, therefore, what's the issue? It's not yours because it hasn't come into existence yet. I could affect it like it affects someone else's. I could affect something mm -hmm. that doesn't come into existence yet. That's the rationale of Yosef. Okay? Only for you. Well, at least, no, it's her thing. Well, we'll see. Abai's going to ask on Rav Yosef in a minute. It's not comparable. Because when I say something else, somebody else's thing is off limits to me, it's fine. Something doesn't exist is off limits. But here, the husband wants to prohibit something that's not his on her right he's he says what would say the case of the mission is speaking about she's saying that my earnings are not permitted to you to you not to me right he's she's saying to husband you should not be able to benefit from my earnings so Rabbi Yochanan says he has to nullify because in case he divorces her it's going to be, be coming to effect for him He's bringing a proof for Yosef, just as you see that you can prohibit something that's not yours on yourself. So therefore, you could affect something that's not in existence also. So Rabbi is going to ask in a minute, we're going to comparison. If I say something that doesn't exist, is also to me is one thing. But here she's saying something that doesn't exist is us to my husband. So it's not really comparable. You following? No, 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 no. Rabbi Yochanan says like this. She says, makes it netter. What's my earnings are off limits to you. Okay. So today it's not effective. Why? Because you're indebted to, she's indebted to him. So Rabbi Yochanan says, good advice. If you divorce, you should, because if you should divorce her, that netter will take effect then. And then it, you'll be off limits. You won't be able to benefit from her earnings. But, but the earnings don't exist yet. So when's the netter going to take effect? It's going to affect something which doesn't exist yet in the future. 
So who is affecting who? Her net is affecting the husband. That's when the husband will not be able to benefit from her earnings. So she's affecting her earnings in the future, which is not hers yet, to the husband. And what's Rav Yosef? Just he said, you can make a net on something that's not yours, pertaining to, to the one who says that I, I will not benefit. So that's good. If it's the woman saying, I will not benefit from somebody else's, I will not benefit from what doesn't exist yet. That's fine. Because it's the person vis-a-vis, -vis, something doesn't exist. Not existing, somebody else is the same. What about if I say, I'm making a netter on something that doesn't exist for a third party? It has no relevance to this. What do you bring me a proof from this? Regarding yourself is one thing. As I could prohibit your asset on me, I could prohibit something that doesn't exist on myself. But to, to prohibit something that doesn't exist on the third party, that has no relevance. That's going to be a bias question. What does one thing have to do with another? Let's take a look. No, it's not void. It's nothing. It does not be canceled. It shouldn't even have to be nullified. It doesn't exist. The matter, the matter has no value. You know, shiny columns, hova, the most satirist, chadera, olov, osnami, dov, shlubal, olam. Omale, abayes, abayes, says to Rav Yosef, his rebbe, bishlom, or the most satirist, chadera, olov. Why could a person prohibit somebody else's fruits on himself? Sherei, or the most satirist, of a chadera. He could assert his own peris on his friend. What, what does that mean? So the Ron will explain. Because I'm in control of myself. Even though the fruits aren't, like I could say, my assets are off, are off limits to somebody else. Because the assets are my assets. I could say, what doesn't exist is off limits to me because I am I'm in control of myself. So I could affect myself. What about if both elements don't exist? You don't, you don't control the other person and you don't control the assets you want to prohibit. So it's, it's not comparable. You have to have at least one thing going for you. Either you as the person or the asset. As what exists. My asset is off limits to you. So who am I, who am I prohibiting? A third party who I have no control, but I have control of my asset. Right. If I say something doesn't exist should be also to me, that's like saying somebody else's asset should be off limits to me. Because, but one element, one side of the equation, you're in control of. But what about you in control of neither? I say the asset that doesn't exist should be forbidden to a third party. The asset is not in your, you don't control, and the third party you don't control. So that's a biased question. They're not comparable. Let's see. Abai Omale Abai Bishlom Odomose Peris Chavero Olov. I could prohibit somebody else's fruits on myself. Shri Odomose Peros of Al Chavero. As I could prohibit my own fruits on the third party. Ella, yes, a dove shall bolo Olam Al Chavero. But can I prohibit something that's not mine on my friend? Shabolo Olam Shari in Odomose Peris Chavero Chavero. Can I say somebody else's asset should be forbidden to him? I have no control of an asset. I have no control of a person. So because you have no control, you can't do such a thing. Okay? Let's take a look in the run. Rabinu. It's the second line. It's the first time they get wider. Hamagishim, I see the Ishto, Rezu, Osa, Vuchelos, Ikudu, Demukvi, Lo, Per, Kafopi. The Gemara says in Exubis, Okay? He goes and he consecrates the earnings of a husband. Now the question is, does he feed his husband? Does he feed his wife? A husband's obligated to, to, to feed his wife. Let's, she would say to her husband, but she, she's a big earner. She says, do me a favor. I'm not interested in your support. I'm keeping my earnings myself. Could she do that? It's an argument in the Gemara whether she could do that. But let's say she could do that, so we'd say a very simple case, right? We say that, we say that if he makes the, he says, I'm consecrating your earnings. It says she continues eating, according to the Tanakama. Right? She can, why? Because yeah. how is she supposed to live? Right? If he's not supporting her house. So either it's speaking about she says to the man, no thank you, or it's speaking that she, he's not supporting her, he's not supporting her, and th these are only means of support. So of course he can't consecrate it. Right? Because he has no right to her assets if he's not supporting her. Okay? So, but the, the whole discussion, was, what about the addition? M more than she needs to support herself. Right? That's Rameir says, because Rameir's position is Adam Bachman Dov Shalom Olam. Rameir says he can't. But Rabbi Yuchanan Duri says he can't. It's chulin. So let's see it inside. Ikadu Gundo Perak Avo Bi Afil Malo Mazonis Afil Hochi Harshus Biyodo Levatel Hegdesho. She could actually annul this Hegdesh. Why? Rehu Os Varezu Osav Ocheles Mirafun Dov Mahosam. You call the Isha Loma Lebalo. A woman could say to her husband, Ain't in the Zonis. Ain't in Osam. Not interested in your support. I don't need your support. And you know something? I'll keep my earnings for myself. 
Man the Pulkin Rapuno, Hossum, Bukala Masisha, and Malulam is onus. Dozum says, I will not support you. So there's no question. If he doesn't want to support his wife, you understand? Of course, she, she could take from her earnings enough to support herself. Shemochi, he also will kill us. Now, Bab Osor, what about the additional earnings which is beyond what she needs to support herself? Does the Hegdish affect that? So Rameir says, Masi Yudeh, the Hainu, Yeser al Chomish Sloim, be Yehuda, Kriso Hosom. Rameir me Hegdish, why? Muglash of Osom, me Milo Mazonis, me Milo Mo Kesev, Chachomim, as Moser Rameir, Dom Hegdish, Lab me Chaim Komer. When he says it's effective, it's not when, when she, she's alive. The less lay be midi, el lehegdish lachamisa komer. Shabal zocho bahu moiser midin yerusha. If he's not supporting her, so why? Because her husband inherits a wife. So the hegdi, when he consecrates it now, it's in eventual. If she dies, that's when it's taken effect. Why? Sfirla Rameir, and that's Rameir's position, the other Magdish, the Bishul Bololom. Rameir holds other Magdish. You can't consecrate something that doesn't exist. What does Rabbi Yochan Muri, the Asander, say? Rabbi Yochan Asander, Sfirla, they know the Magdish, the Bishul And Shmuel says, and we rule like Rabbi Yochan Asander. So we have a contradiction. Rameir, Shmuel says now, Mishnah, that we rule like Rabbi Yochan and Nuri, that you should what? You should nullify it now in case he divorces her, because that's when the net is going to take effect. And there he says, when the husband consecrates the wife's uh, earnings, it's meaningless. So how do we reconcile the two? Because of the additional earnings. That belongs to her. What's the question? You're asking a, a, a contradiction between consecration and, and konam. Avogavdin, Odom Magdish, Dovish Lobol Olam, Odom Osa Dovish Lobol Olam. Even though you can't consecrate something that doesn't exist, but in Nether you could affect something that doesn't exist. Why? Dashkan Milsa Disa Bekonomos, because we find there's something by Nether which you don't find by Hegdish. Shari Alpi Shein Odom Magdish, Peres Chavero. Although I can't consecrate somebody else's asset, I could say so, somebody else's fruits are, are forbidden to me, even though I don't own the fruits. Mm-hmm. That's what Rabbi Yosef says. So on that, Abai, he says, well, they're not comparable. I could say somebody should be forbidden to me. Share Odom Osa Peres of Achavero. Ain't in Vadi Kushto Kamrit. What you're saying is correct. The Peres Chavero Kedov Shlobod Olam Domi. When I say somebody else's asset should be forbidden to me, that's like something that doesn't exist. Something that doesn't exist yet that's eventually be mine. If I want to affect it now, what am I affecting? I'm affecting something that's not mine yet. It didn't come to existence. It's not mine. So, I, you know, I, you could do that. You know why? Because I could affect, I see, I could affect something that's not mine and myself. Even though it's not mine, I could affect it. If I say, Reuven says, Shimon, your fruits are forbidden to me, Reuven. Does he affect it? It's a netter. Yeah. So you see that to affect something, it does not be yours. But who are you affecting? Yourself. Right. So if I want to say the, my, the fruits will grow in the future, those fruits are forbidden to me. Right. It's not a problem, right? Because the fruits didn't grow in those different than third parties' fruits. But the proof has no relevance to what you want to apply it to. Either the fruits are yours, the person himself. Although the fruits are not yours, you're in control of yourself. Although you have no dominance on your, the third party, but the fruits are my fruits. As long as you have one of the components, that's enough to affect it. 
But when neither are under your control, the fruits are not yours and the person is not yours. Right? Can I say somebody else's asset should be forbidden to him? I have no control over that. Not over the asset or the person. Therefore, Rav Yosef, Rav, Abai rejects Rav Yosef. What he says doesn't make any sense. Phenomenal, okay? No, see, the mayor holds Avid the Osi. The mayor says, Ogmak is read by Avid the Osi, which is a question. See, this is a machlokas. This is a machlokas. It's very, very interesting. Shaila. This is a machlokas. It has to do with the fifth parent. What exactly is the problem? Is it because the asset is not here, therefore you don't own it? You can't. Or is the reason it's a, it's a lack of the das of intent? You know, you say, what is the, 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 most, the most important component in every transaction? Intent. Do we, do we serious when he says he wants to transact something that doesn't exist? The mayor says the person has sufficient intent, he could have transact such a thing. It's not because you don't own it. It's eventually going to come. I'm, me I'm meant to live, I'll earn. So the earnings are meant to be. The fruits are meant to grow. So I see them as if they're here already. But factually, but since they're not here, What's the intent of the person? Rameir says that's not a problem. Intent's not a problem. That's Rameir. That's what Rameir says. That <coughs> you could what? That you could magdish dog shlabal olam. You could. You could be magdish. No, it's not. That it's not comparable at all. But according to us, that we, the, 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 the others who argue Rameir, no. It's not only Kamir's das. If, if the asset's not here, it's not yours. So you can't prohibit something that's not yours or somebody else. Of course, you have to have minimally one element to be able to bring it about. Okay? Yes. We have a contradiction. We have to reconcile Shmuel. Right. Shmuel says now in Mishnah, we rule like Rabbi Yochan Ben Nuri. Right. What does that mean? So you see, you, could, you have to, not, you, the netter affects something that doesn't exist so yet. Not challenges, no. So we're trying to wreck. So Rav Yosef answered it. Abai says the answer is not an answer. So that was his challenge. It's, you know, this sounds familiar. You know, you say, somebody say, you know, we're talking about different mesechtas. Good. You know? Okay. I can relate. Okay, so now you can relate to it well. Okay. The, no, the intent, the intent, right, is there. It's, it's sufficient intent. And, 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 and it's considered yours because it's meant to come. That's Avid Dossi. Right, right. We hold Avidiyasi means nothing. It means nothing, Avidiyasi. Till it's here, it's not yours. Right? Avidiyasi means you have um, a, a future. The tree is, gonna, is a perennial. It's going to grow. It doesn't, but until it's here, it's not here. Okay. See, there's a case in Babuncia. A person wants to consecrate his, uh, his catch. He sets out nets. He says, I'm consecrating or I'm selling you this year's catch. And he has his nets already set. You got it? I mean, the f there the fish are in the sea. They just didn't come into your net yet. So there you can hear it more. It's not, it's not, oh, not yours. There, the fish exists. There you could say it's a Gamir's Das question. Since they haven't yet come into your nets, do you have sufficient intent? Right here, if the fruits don't exist, you say, how could you own something that doesn't exist? Here the fish exist, they just did it, they're swimming into your, your baited in that. It's baited. The fish are coming in. So therefore you could say, we see the fish as if it's in the net or not. But since factually, maybe a person doesn't have sufficient mirrors, thus, you don't have sufficient intent here. Okay? So let's see our bias. That is our bias answer, the, the, the contradiction. Okay, so Abai refutes his Rebbe. Elom Rafuna, Brader of Yeshua. You have this? She says, my, she's not consecrating her earnings. She's consecrating her hands. My hands are consecrated for their earnings. Yeah, let's say I, I consecrate a tree. Now, the produce of that tree is what? Is Hegdish. Why? Because the tree that's producing the, the, the produce is, has been consecrated. So, if I said, my hands are consecrated for their earnings, 
That means anything my hands produce are hegdish. It has nothing to do with Avshla Bololam, because what am I consecrating? I'm consecrating my hands. Right? Okay? So it's good. Bomeris Yigdushu Yodai Lo Say, and the Yodayim Ho Istu Baolam. Sidomar asks, Vichi Omro, Vichi Omro, Hochi, Kocho, Vomishabdin Yodai Labao. Even if she says it, I mean, could you consecrate something that's not yours? Her hands are indebted to produce for him. So it's like, it's not your hands. You understand? It's like a, 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 per, a person is an Evid Kanani, Kanani slave. And he says, I, I consecrate myself. What do you mean? You're, 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 you're the owner's chattel. You, know, you don't own yourself. So here, her hands are already bound to the husband. Your consecration means nothing. That's the worst question. Yeah. You hear this? She says, no, they should be consecrated when I get divorced. I'm consecrating now to take effect later. Oh, now we're, now we're dealing, okay. Now it's a little different. See, here I'm not consecrating the earnings. I'm conse- the asset, factually, hands are hers. The here, they're hers for later also. Good, 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 good. That makes me, let, let, let's make a differentiation. I once mentioned years ago, there's a, what's that locha if you have a, for, I consecrate a, my vineyard. So it's hegdish. All the grapes that grow in the vineyard are hegdish. What happens when Shemitah comes? The Torah says on Shemitah, everything becomes ownerless. So there's, there's a position in Yushalmi that even, even uh, the vineyard, of Hegdish, Shemitah, everybody has a right to take the fruit. Hmm. So Rameer Simcha asks, how do we understand it? You consecrate it. If you have an ordinary ownership, we understand. Right? You own it. Hmm. Shemitah, you don't own it. Therefore, it's ownless. But if you consecrate something, factually, the grapes are growing from vines that have been consecrated. It's a kerim. The kerim is a consecrated kerim. So how do we understand it? He says something very, very interesting, Rameer Simcha. He says, when you own something, Think about time sharing, right? You, I own something for now, I own it now, and I own it for next week, next year, and as long as the thing exists, that's, I own it. Now, if the Torah says in, in advance, you can't consecrate something that's not, let's say you have a partner. You have a partner. A- and every other day you have a right to it. And I say, I consecrate my share. What? So I'm consecrating the object. But how much of the object could you consecrate? Your All your time sharing. The Torah says the seventh year, it's not yours. So the, when he originally consecrated the kerem, it was not his to consecrate. That year is not yours to consecrate. So therefore, what happens when Shemitah comes? The fruits are own on this. Because it's an ordinary, the, 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 he, the original consecrated never had a right to consecrate it. It wasn't his to consecrate. It's not hegdish. It was never hegdish. It was never yours to consecrate. Therefore, what's the produce of the seventh year? It's hefker. The husband owns my hands for their, for their earnings. Now, but my hands, does he own them forever? Right? So the hands, the hands are here. So uh, the hands are dav shlobololam, but they're dav shlobololam. Wait, 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 I understand that. So she's consecrating hands now when she will be divorced. It's the same thing. But there's a difference. There's a difference. You know what the difference is? Because if you hold dav in terms of Consecrate something that's not yours, that's not the issue. What about giving you the das? See, that's the difference. See, here, if you hold that you have to have intent, she has no control whether she's going to be divorced or not. Right? See, when she says, My hands are consecrated consecra- for when I will be divorced, you know something? You're locked in here forever. No, she has no control. So I'd say, maybe here, everybody would agree she can't do it. Because the lack of Gemir is das. Right? If I say I have control over something, it's one thing. Yeah. Here you don't have, when you're saying it, you have no mm-hmm. control over yourself. Right? Maybe you will never have that. Mm-hmm. It's all theoretics right now we're talking. Which means there's a reality. Initially, you never owned it for the seventh year. So when you consecrate it, you consecrate it what's yours. You own it. You own it. Right, right. Right, right. Let, let's see inside. <coughs> Someone asked, Hashemi Elam Megarsha? But factually, how could she do it? Right now, she's not divorced. She wants to affect something now for when she will be divorced. 
The Chiyam Rahochi Mahanya. So Mar says no. The Chiyam Rahochi Mahanya. Does it help? Omar, Ravelo, Ravelo brings a case. We'll see. Ron speaks why it's not. It's comparable, not comparable. Oma ilu Omar. Listen to the case. Omar lechaveru. So the Zushani Mochelo. Hear this. Right now, Ruvain owns the field. He's selling it to Shimon. He's hard up for cash. He sells the field to Shimon. And he says, and when I will buy it back from you, in the future, it should be Hegdish. So what he's making the statement. He owns the, Ruvain owns the field today. He says, the field that I'm selling to you, when I repurchase it from you, it should be Hegdish. Wait, 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 wait. So the halach is, it is, it is, Milo Koch, isn't it Hegdish? It is, it is. The halach is, nobody argues this case. Because when he made that statement, he didn't have to sell it. He could consecrate at this moment. So because he there's a degree of control over the field, he could affect it at a time, even though it's up to the seller, the buyer, to resell it to him. Right? But if you choose to sell it to me, I'm saying now, when I have full control, it should be Hegdish. Because right now he has the control. No, he didn't say that. No, no, he didn't say that. That can't become something he doesn't want it to be. That's, that's understood. No, no when, no, when he buys it back immediately, immediately, no, that means it will never be his. The moment he buys it back, immediately it's, it's, it's Hegdish. But why? But then he doesn't have control. The answer is because right now, that, that's the answer. That's the answer. Because right now he has control. So he's got to give up. It seems to me you can short sell, short circuit this whole thing by saying, okay, I own it now. And since well, he wants the cash now. He needs the cash right I know now. He needs it, but he didn't sell it yet. But, he, but, he, but he's not consecrating it now. But he's consecrating he wants to consecrate when he, when he buys it back. And you're saying you're going to get it back in your So when is. No, but when is it going to be Hegdish? Now or later? Uh, later when he buys it back. That's what he said. Uh, Double portion. Okay, if, if I'm the guy trying to get that field for Hegdish, you know. You can't afford to give it to Hegdish today. So right? Don't, don't, don't make the in the merit that I will Hegdish, be Magdish, I'll make ten times on, on the sale. Okay. Do you want to take the loss now? Do you want to take the, the, the tax deduction now? You know, the you're not taking that. You're not getting tax. Get no, Hegdish. you're not taking tax deduction now. You're not getting it now. I the transfer to take place now to Hegdish. It's only when you repurchase it. But, but I, I would argue. We don't even know who will sell it back to him. Right. Well, the Except that the Gemara's going to ask. It's not comparable. Because there, at least when he was said it, he was in control now. Here, when she says it, she's married. If she's married, she's not in control at all. That's going to be the most question. Look, Maskele Rav Yirmiyo. Midomi. Sodu zushini mochalo chashto biyodehi. The field, he says, the field that I will sell you when I repurchase it, I'll consecrate it. But at least now he's in control. If he would want to consecrate, he can consecrate it. Isha, biyoda lahagdish right? But could she consecrate her, her earnings today? The hands now are indebted to the husband. So for all intents and purposes, she may be this way for the rest of her life. So what would the case be comparable to? So Ron says, what was Ravela's consideration? Right? What, no, what was Ravela's consideration? Elo, le'omel l'chaveru, sodu shu shemachartiloch. loch. It would be, come here, a person says, the field that I sold you, l'shek ochena mimcho tagdish. Wait, 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 wait. So they, that would be comparable. Okay, yes, okay. The field that I already sold to you should be hegdish when I repurchase it. Right? That's right, that's exactly. One second. Vega. Uh, I just want to see just this case. Okay, so the Gemara says, 
דמי אל עומר סודר, או חבר סודר, שזה מחייב בו שכן, אני יכול להגדיש את המקוד שלו, אין בי עוד לך, נו, פקט, דיר איץ נאט, איץ נאט, נאט, סיפרת הקייס, איץ נאטינג, איץ נאט הגדיש. הוא אומר, הוא אומר, that case, the case of the woman would be comparable to say, the field that I will buy from you should be הגדיש. everybody agrees it's definitely not הגדיש, because you have no control. So why over here, if she's married, she has no control of herself, right? So we're back to square one. Should not be hegdish. Should not be hegdish. Right now, she has no control over herself. She's a married woman. So we want, she wants to affect something now, if she'll be divorced. So that's like saying, the field that I already sold you, right? Pre-marriage, you can do what you want. This is already, she's, this is, she's in the marriage. The field that I already sold you, that I no longer have control over, when I will have control in the future, or if I will have, it should be hegdish. Oh, that's, it's, not, it's nothing. It's meaningless. It's not a valid consecration by the field. So why over here, regarding herself, that we have to be concerned for the future, if he divorces her, then that will take effect. Right? The Mishnah says, the corner of Yochanan Minuri, he has to nullify the netter in case if he divorces her in the future, the netter will take effect. She's not in control. No, no, but that's for all intents and purposes. The answer is you should take a look at the woman. Right? Like the other stories we had. Take a look at the woman. He's going to divorce her. You know, it's going to happen. Take a look at her. No, Duffer doesn't belong to her. Duffer doesn't belong to her. Duffer belongs to the husband. The additional. No, but he doesn't say because of that, though. He doesn't say. No, because the doubt that, no, 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 because we already proved Rabbi Yochan Nuri has nothing to do with that, though. It's because Dov Shul, because other marks of Dov Shul below him. But we have a problem. Okay? So on that, Gemara says, Maskif, no. Rabbi Domi, Gabi, Zvina, Psiko, Milsai, Gabi, Isha, Ni, Psiko, Milso. So, let's see, Maskif, Ni, Devari, Shabba, Kodokis. The Lekla, Ni, Me, Isha, Me, Sodeh. Right? The woman is not comparable to the field. Zushani mochaloch. Lo dami gedamrit, like you said. The field I will sell you should be hegdish when I repurchase it. That's not comparable to our case. Because there today he has control over it. Right? As we said. Afiloch in my divorce, lemishet leidach. But you want to say, you know what? This is comparable to the case where you want to consecrate a field after you sold it. With def over there, everybody agrees. Definitely not. He says the woman is not comparable to that case. That, th it's still better. Why? After everything said and done, my hands are indebted to my husband. But factually, whose body is it? No, no, but physic, no, the physicality. It's, she, she's, she's still a person. Right? She's not a chattel. You have rights. When you sell off a field to a third party, the field that I will repurchase from you, yeah, when I sold the red, should be hegdish. You, you have nothing, no relevance to the field, to anything. So, of course, there is nothing. The woman has greater relevance to herself than the field. So maybe because her hands are her hands, although the rights in the hands are the husband's, maybe that's sufficient that she could consecrate for the future. No, 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 no. In the bad, no, because no, no, now we'll say it like this. Clear, we have to say it's a concept of what Gemir is thus. It's intent. Where you have no relevance, not to the field, not to the produce, not to any level of control, it's understood. There's no way, whatever you say, it means, mean, it means nothing. It's Gemir is thus. But over here, where the hands are my hands, even though the rights, the earnings of the hand belong to the husband, but I'd say, you know, some sins. But, but my body is my body. I'm dedicated that if I should ever become free of my husband, it's, it should be consecrated. Or it should be off limits to you. We're talking about nether. It's off limits to you. That's why he has to know it. So was he saying, you can't take it to the extreme. The case you want to compare it to, that's the extreme <coughs> case. This case is a little less than that. Got no connection. No connection whatsoever. Here she, she's connected. But, maybe, but I'm saying, but clearly you have to say, that the concept is, it's a chesorni gemir is das. It's lack of intent. 
by the field, you can't even even begin talking because the whole thing is it, totally irrelevant. The hands are my hands. No, one more. If he, if he never divorced her, then what happened? But. Yep, even though the netter is. No, wait, 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 wait. But the netter is not effective today. Today, the netter. But the potential. She, she, she. She has a connection. Right. Exactly, exactly, exactly. The Gemara is not saying definitely, but factually, he's saying there's a difference. You can't compare it to that case. Okay? Let's see the case. It says, It's 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 final and done. Gabi Yishim, you see Kamilsa, Holo Dami, you know what this case will be comparable to? Listen to this. Loom el Khaver Sodu Shushimashkanti Loch. Hear this? Lukshev Denim Nimchotantish. Person gives a field as collateral for a loan. And he says, The field that I have already given as collateral when I redeem it, when I pay the debt, it should be Hegdish. Even that it's not comparable. Because it's always within your power to redeem the field, to redeem the to redeem the collateral. Right? Milo Kocha, Maskar Rabshi's very Rabidi, Midome, so the Biodo lived also. Right? The collateral, you can always redeem the collateral. So therefore, you're able to affect it for the future. Isha Biodo is Garish. You know, she's not up there. Right? Holo Dami. Okay, we're not finished yet. So what would we compare it to? Our case. El Lobel Chaver, so the Zusha Meshkati Loch, Esashoni. You hear this? The field which I gave to your collateral 10 years. The field 10 years, I can't talk about it. Right? I can't talk about it. It's locked in for 10 years. This is like a CD. No penalties. It's stuck in there. It's locked in. Okay? When I redeem it after 10 years, Tagdish. So when he's doing the act of consecration, he has no control. The field is his. The field is his, correct? Of course, it's a mashko. It's collateral. And he has no control. He cannot bring about that effect now. It's only in 10 years when he'll redeem it. Milo Kocha. It's Hegdish. Wait, we'll see. Not that way. It's still comparable to, to the woman. Maskavlo Rabash, Midomi. Hosam Kotz. Isha is Misla Kitsusa. There, after 10 years, actually, it's coming back. So, therefore, that's the reason why it could affect it, because after 10 years. But here, this is, op this is forever. For all intents and purposes, she doesn't even know she'll ever get out of this. So who said her netter should be effective? We're presenting every shade of possibility. No, because we're dealing with, we're dealing with Gemir's Das. If you say if it could be Gemir's Das there, it could be Gemir's Das there. Moses says, no, maybe not. I ain't saying it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Hello. One second. Hello. Omer Ravashi Shani Kono. Oh, how do you know this? This is this is the finale here. Hello, Ravashi Shani Kono. Mr. Chi. Kedusha is a group. Domi. Kono is like kedusha. It's like consecrating something. One second. Uchadurava. Now, the husband. What rights does he have in the hands? They're indebted. It's a shibut. It's true. You can't consecrate something that's not yours. Right, all the cases. I sold the field, I can't come. Now, does the husband own my hands? He doesn't own my hands. He has a right in the hands. If I consecrate my hands, what happens if a person has a, a lien on my cow and I consecrate the cow? What happens to your lien? Your, your lien is revoked. It's revoked. The husband has a lien on my hands for its, pro, for its produce, for its earnings. Konim is the equivalent of Kedush Zekwa. It means korban. So if that's the case, it revokes, it's a revocation of the husband, of the husband's rights. She said, Conan, my hands are off limits to you. We'll see in a moment, so if that's the case. What do we have to talk about after she gets divorced, even today? So the Gemara says, because Amur Rabon Lishibude, on the Torah level, really, it should be revoked. It is revoked. We had this before in the run. Right? It should revoke it. So why is it revoked? 
which he, uh, now it should be removed immediately. Yeah. When she says, my hands are off limits to you. No, 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 no. It's a netter. It's a netter. Netter should revoke a lien, revokes a lien, even today. But because for the sake of the marriage, say, you know some we intensify his right, therefore your netter does not revoke it. But what happens when if he divorces her? So now it's not a question of Shalom Bayes any longer. So now, you know, now, now it kicks in. So Ron's going to ask a question. Don't. It says Konomis is is Hegdish. It's Hegdish. There's a, there's, a, there's a question, Yesh Mila Bakonomos. There's a question if you benefit something, you said, Mila, you have to bring a carbon Mila on it. To that degree. So the, the Ron's going to ask a phenomenal question now. We say that the Chachomim, they intensify the, his Shibur, his lien, that it can't revoke. So as long as they're married, she has, he can benefit. But when he divorces her, it kicks in. So we have a problem. No, so it comes out now it's not effective. It's going to affect the future. Right. So again, it's over That's going to be the Ron's question. Let's just get, get to the Mishnah. Elam Rav Kshani comes to Chikot Kedush to Gav Dom. Chudurav Dom Rav Hegdish Chomitsu Shichrur Mavkin B'day Shibud Iochi Loma Li Shem Yigar Sheno Right? Iochi Loma Li Shem Yigar Sheno Aleph Takes that out. It says, you take a look in the Bach. Al Mura Bonon Le Shibuda de Baal. Ki Hechlo Tagdish. Mehashto. Tigdish Mehato. The Chachomim, what do we have to say about divorce? It takes effect immediately. The answer is the Chachomim, the Mark Subis, they intensify his right. So they intensify his right. It's as if he owns it. Okay? So therefore, the old Shemi Garsheno. So what is it? And therefore, now, what is the concern? If you would want to remarry, you divorce, you want to remarry, it'll take effect in the future. So for that, that's why good advice, null it today. Nullify it today. Take, just take a look around over here. Okay, so and so forth. One second. Now. That run right here, right before the Mishnah. Shemi Garsheno come mehashdin ami kodesh to koni mafkib de shiba de baal no shdim saloma damu rabban le shibu de baal. When we say that's beodo tachtov, that's only when they're still married. The shaviu kolokeach gomov lo kemilve kemalve. If you look at your affair, Shemi Garsheno behindu hosim perakal pi perakal mu rabban le shibu de. That's the Mark Subis. They intensify his right. It's a vimtomar. Oh, now it's right. They, they intensify that the netter is not effective today. Right? The question comes back. If today the netter is not effective, so you make a netter today to effect it after they get divorced, it's a dumb shlobololam. So why is it effective after he gets met? It's here. Today, the netter is not effective. Why? Because the Chacham intensify his right. So the netter does not revoke his right. So for all intents and purposes, the netter is not effective today. He is revoking it. No, today he doesn't have to revoke it. So the rev what's the value of revoking it? Because otherwise, take let's say he won't revoke it. The netter should not be have value for the future. How does the netter affect something which hasn't yet come into existence? That's the Ron's question. Factually, if they wouldn't intensify, the netter would take effect. They only intensified as long as what? She's married to him. I'll tell you, you have to understand what it means. No, it doesn't. You think about it, it's, it's difficult to understand. I might use the word, it doesn't make sense. It's difficult. Factually, when she made the netter, was it effective? No. No! It would be effective, then he can't, couldn't benefit. Okay, you're right, but factually, now that they said. 
Now that they said it's like you're consecrating something that's not yours. What you said today, you're affecting something that's not yours. That's why the husband could benefit from you. Right? That's fact. What's going to be? But the moment he divorces her, it comes into play. When did it start? Did it start before? Did it start later? So she, it could have stopped before. But she had, it was not factually, it was not effective no, no, no. originally. It's words. It's words. It's words. It's words. On a Torah, now Amur Rabon, wait, Amur Rabon, they intend to fight his rights. Does the netter on a Torah level at that moment have any value? At that moment. On a Torah, does not have value, otherwise it couldn't benefit from her. So factually, it has no value. It's irrelevant to me, why not? But the words at that moment have no value. So if they have no value, how, how could she affect something into the future? What do you mean go back? But if you go back, that means the netters the retroactively, he wasn't in violation. Right? When he was married, he could benefit. So that means the netter was nothing. Yeah, I mean, how do you split it? This, this, this is the way I understand it. This is the way I understand it. If I want to consecrate, I own a field today, I'm consecrating today to the future. It's good. Because today I have the ability. So the Chachom say like this. Factually, if you want to make it today, it's not going to work. Because we intensify his right. So in essence, what are you saying? I, I want it to be when I regain my freedom. It's the equivalent of that. You understand? Factually, if you want to take effect today, we're not going to let it. It's like you own the field. It, no, you're redeeming. No, no, not redeeming. Repurchasing the field. I own the field today when I repurchase it to be consecrated. Same thing. Right now, when I make the netter on the Torah, it's like I, I'm in control of myself. But if I take, try to take control, Chachom is not going to allow me. So what difference is it? It's me or the Chachom. That's like me. It's like me. It's like me. No, I understand that. But, yeah, but, but you still have to address my question. But factually, your words are meaningless. You, factually, your words are meaningless. For now. So they only have value for the future. doesn't make a difference why, but factually, they're, they're ineffective. The Chachomim choosing to say that my words are meaningless is like I say, you know, so today I have no control. Because I don't want, because what the Chachomim say, I don't, it's the same thing. In reality, I have control. But if I ch choose to take control, then I give up control. So it's like saying, although I could do it now, which you can, if you do it, they're going to knock it out. So in, in reality, I have control now. But if you take control, we're going to knock it out. So therefore, it's like the field I own today should be consecrated when I repurchase it. That's, that's what that's actually... And therefore it stands. Like the 